But what is the future of this technology and should we embrace it? Joining me now with his take is Director of Communications and Technology at Alec, Jake Morabito. Jake, it's great to have you. I'm very interested in this whole concept of AI, but I wonder, could this potentially be the Armageddon that we are unleashing upon ourselves that we wish that we're going to be able to take back, but it's already going to be done? Well, thanks for having me on, Tommy. And I think we're a ways away from Skynet taking over the world with this AI technology, but it is something that we should be keeping an eye on. Um, I think what really struck a chord with the the world was how OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, they released the technology to the public a few months ago. It really struck a chord with just how capable it was. I think a lot of people maybe knew about AI from Amazon Alexa and Apple's Siri virtual assistants, but a lot of people didn't realize how far it's come. And so now policymakers and the public have to grapple with this technology. Yeah, well, a lot of people find it really cool and really unique. And the concept of it, you know, is great because I'm sure artificial intelligence could handle a lot of things, you know, that we don't want to do. But, you know, you brought up uh, Amazon Alexa, you brought up, you know, these other technologies, the series, all that that we've had for years. But then there's a whole other level of privacy complaints that come along with it that I think a lot of people are really concerned about. It's something that humans create, but does this artificial intelligence, does it have the capability to really live on its own once it's jump-started? I mean, what are the real implications of this kind of technology and how it's advancing? Well, you just pointed out something very important to note is that the technology is still making a lot of simple mistakes. Um, and it's not, it's not a fully developed technology. Um, it's like I saw one example on, on Twitter where... They were trying to buy movie tickets for Avatar and the AI responded, no, it's not out yet. It's, it's still 2022. So that movie's not released yet. Even So even something as simple as getting the date correct so, or even simple math equations, the technology is having these issues. Um, so in that respect, I think it's good that you're already seeing some free market competition injected into this space. Um, like you mentioned, Microsoft has adopted the, the GPT technology into, into Bing. Google is investing in their own competitor, but there's also a lot of new small um generative AI companies emerging on the scene. And that free market, Alec believes that that free market approach is going to lead to better results for consumers. So forgive me because I am not a tech guru by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't fully understand how artificial intelligence comes about. Is this run by a math equation, an algorithm? How does somebody create artificial intelligence to the point where it can operate seemingly on its own? Sure. So how this technology is operating is it's it's essentially using natural language processing, which means it's able to communicate, um, simulating human speech and complete sentences. So that's one of the things that's really alarming people is, wow, it can communicate like I communicate. But that's very powerful. Like, I'm sure anyone who's used, tried to get customer service through a lot of different organizations or companies, they, they've seen these chatbots for years now, and they haven't really worked as advertised. But this new natural language processing can really revolutionize that. Imagine when there were all those airline disruptions just a few months ago and everyone was waiting for hours and hours in phone queues trying to get their refunds or get on a new flight. What if you could just go into an intelligent chat bot and they would immediately know your history and be able to adjudicate any claims and in just a matter of minutes fulfill that request? I think that's going to be the immediate term impact as a lot of companies are going to find new ways to offload some of those menial tasks and help customer service agents and other employees um, free, freed up for more meaningful tasks and the ability to serve more customers. Yeah, it's nice when it, it does help because we have a, a workforce shortage right now because we've got a lot of lazy Americans. But, you know, with the economy doing what it's doing and the fluctuations, I have a feeling that in six months or a year, those same people that don't want to do these jobs are going to be begging to do these jobs. And I wonder, you know, I've said this for many years now, if an iPad can replace you, be careful how much you ask for at work, these people that want, you know, 25 bucks an hour to flip a burger. But now we're seeing at McDonald's, uh, one location is going fully automated. Is there a real risk here to workers? Now, I get it. Some of these tasks, it allows the workers to do better things, a better use of their time. But could this really threaten a workforce and people that are doing these jobs right now if we move to more artificial intelligence? It's definitely something to be concerned about. I mean, one thing that I'd like to, to raise is that this AI technology in its current form, it's very good at reading patterns and predicting things that have that are, are common, but it's not very good at figuring out new creative problems or solving complicated tasks. So like I mentioned, it makes mistakes. 
it'll generate very convincing answers that are just completely wrong or fabricated. So I think this technology is good. It's going to be helpful for companies if they empower their workers to use this technology, not replace them entirely. You're still going to need that creative human input to solve problems. And anyone who's just trying to outright replace an employee with this technology, I think they'll find that it's not going to be um, living up to that level of quality that a human can do. At the end of the day, this will help workers do their jobs better, not replace, not replace them entirely. I love it. And you'd mentioned that these chatbots, they make a lot of mistakes, but they sound very convincing. So you basically just described a modern day Democrat. So we have come Full circle, Jake, but I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the conversation. I think a lot of people see this. It makes us excited. But, you know, on the same token, there's a lot that we got to dig into. The last thing I want to ask you is regulation. How much regulation of this technology do you think we're going to see in the next couple of years? Well, it's already starting. You already have some officials here in the U.S. who are saying that we should get a jump on regulating AI. Again, the technology is still developing. So I, one of the things that Alec fears is that if you jump in too early, you're going to stifle a lot of economic opportunities that will never be able to, to be fully developed. You already have China eagerly looking at this technology, and we don't want to cede leadership to them on this issue. The European Union also looking to stifle American companies. It's really in our best interest to develop the technology here on American shores in a responsible free market limited government way. Well, that you and I can agree on because I love a little innovation and I love some capitalism and some more freedom. Thanks for being here, explaining all of this for us. And, you know, it remains to be seen. Hopefully they don't take us over. But I guess in the next couple of years, maybe that won't be so bad anyway. <laughs> Thanks for being with me. <laughs> Thanks so much.